one-page handout that comes with this presentation, and it's easy to find. Just put my name in Google. I'm the first that shows up. Go into my web page and click on Web Lectures, and this is the fourth lecture in the series. Okay, Scientific Predictions of the Christian Views of Origins. In my first lecture, Beyond the Evolution versus Creation Debate, I introduced three different Christian positions on origins. Young Earth Creation, Progressive Creation, and Evolutionary Creation. In this presentation, we're going to look at predictions made by these different positions and then see if they align with the scientific facts. Now, I don't care where you get your scientific theories, whether you want to draw them from the Bible or whether you get them, say, in dreams at night. It really doesn't matter where the theories come from. But here's the key to science, and this is the wonderful thing about science. You have to go out and test the theories to see if they align with nature. And so that's what we're going to do in this presentation. We're going to make some scientific predictions relative to each of these positions and see if they line up with nature. Now, for those of you who've listened to a few of my presentations, you'll notice I introduce a lot of new terms, or in other words, different categories. And the reason I do this is I want you to be aware of your options so you can make informed decisions about what you believe about origins and in particular about your worldview. Now, the term scientific concordism is an absolutely vital term that you need to know and master in order to understand origins. Simply defined, Scientific concordism is the assumption that God revealed scientific facts in the Bible thousands of years before their discovery by modern science. Or another way of defining this, scientific concordism is the assumption that the Bible aligns or matches up with the facts of science. Now, this is a very reasonable assumption. Think about it. God is the creator of the world. God is also the author of the Bible. You would think that the two would align or be in accord with one another. However, I have a question, and this is it. But is it true? In other words, is scientific concordism a feature of the Bible? And the origins debate allows us to answer this question. The first Christian position on origins that we'll look at is young earth creation. This is creation in six literal 24-hour days, some 6,000 years ago. This position is one that a great number of Christians in the United States accept. Now, if young earth creationism is true, what predictions can we make? And what should we expect to find in nature? Now, young earth creationists believe that the world was created around 4000 BC. Now, how do they get a number like that? Well, they add up the genealogies in the Bible and take these ages to be very, very literal. And that indeed is the number that we do get is about uh, 4000 BC, or in other words, 6000 years ago. Now, I'll talk about genealogies in presentation number 11. But for the sake of argument, let's work with their assumption that the genealogies are 
hard and fast literal numbers. Now, according to young Earth creationists, all living creatures were created in one week about 6,000 years ago. So what should we expect with regards to the appearance of living organisms over time? Well, what we should find is every creature appearing, including dinosaurs, which are reptiles, and humans. According to young earth creationists, dinosaurs, like T. rex, and humans walk the earth at the same time. Now, from a young earth creationist perspective, what is the next major event in earth history? Well, it's this, the sin of Adam. Adam sins, and death enters the world. And it's physical death. Young Earth creationists are right on this point. It's not simply spiritual death, but it's physical death. In particular, God judges Adam. Dust you are, and to dust you shall return. That's a reference to something physical, not spiritual. So what prediction can we make as death spreads throughout the entire creation? Well, what happens is creatures start to die and they leave their bones behind. So over time, there should be an increase of each and every type of creature leaving their bones behind in the Earth's crust. According to young Earth creationists, the next major event happens about 1600 years after the creation week, and it's this. It's the flood of Noah. Now, how do they get the date 2344? Well, they're adding up the Genesis 5 genealogy, and that's what it adds up to. Noah's flood lasts for one year, according to the scriptures, it is a universal flood, in other words, a global flood, in which all living organisms are destroyed, and only those inside the ark with Noah are saved. So what fossil pattern prediction should young Earth creation make with regards to the global flood? What we should find is the mixing of all the different bones of each and every creature that didn't get inside the ark to be found in the global flood layer throughout the Earth's crust. In other words, we should find the mixing of each and every bone of each and every different type of creature. And at the end of Noah's flood, which lasts a year, Noah and his family comes out of the ark and God makes a covenant with them never to destroy 